guys, welcome back to the channel, Spectre6 here. Uh, today I'm going to be reacting to something that a friend of mine had sent me. Um, for those of you who are familiar with them, uh, T-Rex Arms, Lucas Bodkin, you know, they, um, they make holsters, they make belts, they make mag pouches. I, I, I don't, they might make mag pouches, I'm not sure, or maybe they just have them on their store, I can't remember. Um, but, you know, they, they make holsters for your handguns. Um, and, you know, they have their own plate carriers and stuff like that. I've actually bought from them before. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a T-Rex Arms sling on my ACR. And speaking of the ACR, a friend of mine has sent me a video of uh, Lucas doing a Modern Warfare 2 ACR IRL video. And according to my friend, he was very critical of the ACR. And so he sent it to me and, and thought maybe I could make a video about it, give my two cents about it, see you know, what I think, and yeah, go from there. As a fan of the ACR, I might get a little heated, but I will try to be as unbiased as possible. Before we jump into it, guys, um, I just want to let y'all know that I have launched my Patreon page. The link will be down in the description. If you want to support me and the channel, that's the best place to do it as of right now in the age of demonetization here on YouTube. Also, all my social media links will be down below. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and with that all being out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into this video. He has a full auto ACR. Okay. Is the ACR as cool as people think it is? And the short answer is absolutely not. The only reason the ACR still gets talked about, still gets bought by people my age, is because of a video game that came out over a decade ago. Any unrecognized contacts will show up as white dots. That's right, Modern Warfare 2. Which is pretty cool if you think about it, because a video game literally <laughs> kept a gun alive within the gun industry. So it's pretty cool to note that arts and entertainment, whether it is video games, movies, you know, whatever it happens to be, drives sales and drives innovation sometimes in the firearms industry. Uh, it also keeps products alive, like this one right here. Now, Okay. No. The ACR was not talked about it's not still being talked about because of a video game it may have something to do with it but that is not why the acr is talked about that's not why people want the acr back people liked the acr because of the granted bushmaster didn't really pull it off very well but the fact of the modularity and at the time this was like something kind of unheard of because it was all about you know DIARs and AKs and stuff like that and this gun was kind of like a game changer um, it just you know didn't take off the way that most people hoped it would a game does not I refuse to believe that a game actually influences something to still be talked about still be sold bought purchased whatever no why did the ACR die? Well, there's a lot of reasons behind that. You can research it. You can look into that. We're not going to get into it. Uh, but the skinny is, uh, from my experience with the ACR, uh, I would never pick this gun over the other guns that we have. We've got 416s, MCXs, SCARs, all sorts of custom DI, ARs, LMTs. Okay, just right off the bat, Lucas is already sounding just like an AR fanboy. I mean, I love the MCX as well. And I know the MCX is not an AR-15, but it's still AR-styled. And I've watched some of his videos in the past, um, especially when, you know, I was younger to, you know, kind of like help me pave my way into, you know, getting into the world of firearms and stuff like that. But it's just um, r going right into it. He's immediately critical of, of the rifle. And, you know, I'm really interested to see if he actually f explains why he's being so critical because as of right now, he's kind of coming off as just an AR fanboy. I just got a Knight's rifle. I'll choose any of those guns over this sucker. I've had this sucker blow up twice on me. And I haven't even shot this since we got it back. It just got zeroed, so I saw it being shot. It seemed to function. I just fired one round and got a hit on steel. So I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty confident that this will work this time, maybe. Uh, but the other cool thing about this gun... All right, and I did do a little bit of research on this. So... 
Apparently, Lucas had purchased his ACR at some point in the past and had had issues with it and then sent it in to be worked on, and obviously now he has it back and he's shooting it, and it seems to be working just fine. Um, <clears throat> we're really into the video here, but I'm hoping he's not criticizing and judging the ACR just because he got a lemon. I mean, there's lemons in everything. There's lemon ARs, there's lemon AKs, and any anyone who's you know, in-depth familiar with the ACR will know that the early ACRs, like the very first ACRs, you know, had issues with firing multiple rounds with a single trigger pull, and then they were recalled, and then the rifles after that were good. I mean, my rifle has been perfectly fine. Um, and then when the Freedom Group took, took over production of the ACRs, that's when the quality control really dipped, and that's one of the reasons why Remington's no longer in business. So if he's basing this entire video off of the fact that he might have just had a bad gun and it took a lot of time and money to get it working that's not a fair judgment for the rifle and just based off of what he just said he hadn't fired it since they got it back so he probably hasn't really fired the acr or his acr in a very long time i feel like immediately just off the bat that he's not actually giving it a fair chance we're going to be running some experiments is we have a select fire ACR as the title uh, indicates. So we're going to be doing some drills with this in auto, both suppressed and unsuppressed. So let's go over the build real quick because there's, there's one key difference to this gun that may have contributed to some of the issues we had early on. This is a chopped 13.7 gun. It was originally chopped by uh, Parker Mountain. Uh, he had to work on it twice and it has since been worked on by Templar Precision. Um, so it is a little bit shorter than the stock, you know, ACR configuration. Uh, I'm going to be playing with it in the unsuppressed and suppressed settings. So, you know, when I add the mini Surefire Suppressor and not. Uh, standard polymer handguard. I have another handguard, but honestly, the, the lockup on it's horrible and the tolerancing is trash. Uh, so standard polymer it is. Uh, the super wobbly ACR stock. In fact, the entire gun, I don't know if you could see, all three of these parts are wobbling all over the place. The tolerances are horrible. The ACR stock doesn't wobble. At least mine doesn't. There's a reason the ACR stocks are still being made. Because of how reliable they are. And when he's talking about... <clears throat> sorry. When he's talking about the tolerances, the wobbliness, the ACR was literally built to be not closed off like an AR. They allow a little bit of a wobble... So that whenever dirt, grime, dust, mud, all that stuff gets in there, especially because if you tilt the ACR in a certain way, um, uh, let me show you real quick. Sorry about that. I unplugged my headset. So the ACR. Yeah. So I don't know if you'll be able to see at the chamber there. We can see there's a little bit of a gap. And I don't know what the hell he's talking about. My ACR is not like loose or wobbly or, or anything like that. But even so, like with the ACR, if you were to hold it up like this, you probably won't be able to, be able to see it on, on the camera, but if you like I said, I put it up against the, the screen here. I can see through, you know, the gaps between the upper and lower receivers. That's because they wanted the ACR to be able to handle harsh terrain, harsh conditions, you know, mud, sleet, snow, dirt, sand, all that stuff. Um, that room allows it to um, make it easier to not choke up and get everything loose and keep the gun functioning. The wobbly stock... I don't know what the hell he's talking about. I think he's just a hater, but we'll we'll continue. Which, hey, maybe it means this will work better in colder weather. Like another video that just came out. Maybe. Uh, but in, normally I don't like guns this wobbly, like they're, they feel like they're just going to fall apart. Uh, they do have an ambi uh, bolt release. Uh, bolt lock down here. In my opinion, it's not quite as intuitive as a bad lever. I prefer a bad lever. Uh, this has a Geisley trigger in it, I think. 
No, it doesn't. I originally had the Geisley, but since this is the select fire lower, uh, it does not have the Geisley trigger. And uh, so yeah, so we're gonna shoot it in standard T-Rex Arms fashion. We're gonna start with the basics, just some ready ups, working the safety, which is, uh, to be honest, it's kind of crappy. Uh, safety and do semi, we're not gonna get into auto. Okay, it's very obvious that he has one of the later production ACRs that came out of uh, the Freedom Group, because they have that stupid selector lever with the screw. Now, those were a horrible choice by Remington. Um, I... <clears throat> I don't I don't know why they could they couldn't just simply keep with the original screwless design that was so tight on there that thing wasn't going to fall off no matter what cuz I had heard stories about the screws not being loctited in the factory and them just falling out and then you know people would lose them um so yeah I'm kind of steering towards he just got a Freedom Group ACR that was a lemon I don't quite yet so we're just going to we're just going to see what happens All right, so we're good to go on that. Getting on the gun nice and fast, working the safety, although it is super spongy. Well, not spongy, it just, it, it slips. I was catching the tri the safety kind of halfway, plus it's cold, I'm wearing gloves, but um, it's just, it's not a real defined click into position, which is normally what I like with the safety. So all A zones in a 141, so my split times, uh, with this stock full auto trigger, a 1.9, a 1.8, a 1.7, a 1.9. Not too bad. Whew, it's got some nice uh, rate of fire right there. So I fired uh, five rounds, perfect. Uh, stock was not fully in my shoulder, I also have a pack on. So these were the five that I had uh, with my semi-auto burst, so good marksmanship. Uh, and the auto burst is kind of up here. So the first three, and then it starts to slide off to the right, path of least resistance, all that good stuff. Um, but as you can see, not too bad. Uh, the time for that is, it's not gonna be accurate in recording. Um, it looks like it's a 131, so very similar. And the split times in auto, it's also not gonna be accurate in recording, but they're probably like .06 or something like that. So that's fun, but let's do a little more auto because I shoot semi-auto guns all the time and I'm curious what I can get away with uh, with some auto action. So both targets on the sides, we're gonna do, do uh, two bursts, around four rounds on each and kind of see what happens. Very slow, getting uh, from safe into auto. It's just slow, doing that with any gun, really. We got triple A zone here, not bad, not bad on auto, controlling that recoil. And then on this guy, not great, not aiming for the head, but that's where the recoil's going. Uh, so we've got two Charlies and uh, an Alpha. Not, not, not horrible, but not great. Oh, it's cold out. All right, so I had a little more bolts than I thought. I thought it was gonna be like a five reload five or something, but it was more like seven. So on this same target, we had three alphas already. So the first burst, not the best recoil management, not the best stock placement either. That slid over. On my second burst though, the, the EOTech just sat there. And that is something that I've noticed running auto because I shoot, I don't shoot auto a lot because it's overrated, but the, the auto I have shot, having a reticle with a little bit more bloom, like an EOTech with this. I just want to say real quick, full auto is kind of overrated. I'm not particularly a fan of it. Accuracy is damn near impossible. 65 mm away outer ring helps. I mean, it's, it's easier to see in the window as it's dancing up and down or off to the right than a single dot optic. Uh, so when I have run auto, like on the saw, on the MCX, which is super fast, uh, or the 416, which is even worse, uh, the EOTech has helped a lot at keeping the rounds 
not, it's not marksmanship, but keeping them a little more center than the single dot that disappears immediately. So another benefit to the EOTech, if you are running auto, it's pretty cool. Not great. That's pretty great. Yeah, we're not gonna talk about this one. So that's at 10 yards. Mag dumping one full magazine with a partial for the reload. We've got everything in the Alpha Charlie. Is at 10 yards. But yeah, full auto is not super accurate. Full auto is never really super accurate. Like, doesn't matter what gun it's coming from. There's a reason why it's only really used for squad automatic gunners in the military, is because it's full auto. In the modern day and age is actually ever since full auto has been a thing it's mostly just been for suppression it's never been for accuracy so i don't even know why he's talking about accuracy when when he immediately strikes me as someone who should know that doesn't matter what gun you fire full auto accuracy is not going to be the best that's a fact So both side targets on the move on semi-auto. I had one right here, called it as I was walking. So we got Delta Charlie 2 Alpha, that was the far target. Auto on him. So I see one in the black here. Everything else is good based on our last drill. And then this guy, semi-auto, two Deltas, three Alphas. Not horrible. All right. So that's running auto at 50 yards. I don't yards. know what he was doing there, but okay. Not recommended. So we've got two alphas, a Charlie, a couple up there. We got, okay, a little better. Sure enough, you know, it's going up. This is what we got, four hits, so we're missing one. And this is the prone, which in the prone, on a normal day, not with four inches of snow, you can control some recoil in the prone. But uh, I wasn't as close to the deck as I could be. And uh, I have a decent group. The others are gone though. So uh, in video games, when you're absolutely lasering people on auto, not very realistic. So to get a little more range out of this gun, all I did is slap this EOTech G33 on here. Now, with the conditions that we have right now and how much glass and snow and ice and stuff is accumulating on the EOTech to begin with, we are now stacking one, two, three, four panes of glass that can receive snow and ice and water. And when you're looking through all four, the image down there, it's not the cleanest. It's not great. The ACOG is gonna be a lot better. Uh, but what we have is a couple steel targets, uh, one here at about 200, we have uh, about a 300, and then we have a big one at 350. We're gonna take some shots on all of them, see if the ACR can play. We're running 55 grain Winchester ball, so nothing super accurized or fancy. This is our training ammo that we run all the time. So we're just gonna send a couple on each. I will call hit in case you guys uh, can't hear, although uh, due to the microphones and stuff. So 200 meters. Three hits. Moving on to the 300. Another hit. Okay, hit. 
Hit. So that's three hits. Couple misses in between. Every time I'm calling hit, my sight picture jumps. Three fifty. That might have been a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. So, it can be done. That's pretty rad. But what happens, because this is with no conditions at all, although I'm not, you know, I'm not on a bench, I'm not bipodded and bagged and all that good stuff, but what happens when we mix close range on auto with some movement and then we get to the long range? Let's see what that looks like. So this is the first target that I engaged and uh, on auto, not bad. Just some ice, so we're good to go. We're looking for shots of the Alpha Charlie. On auto, going this fast. A long ass video. I'm not trying to bullseye it. Now, I shot a bunch of extra rounds on this guy. They missed. So that's fun, we got one here. And then we had some that went high. Not great, a little bit further. But then the long range was good to go. So the ACR has been running not too bad today. We've shot it out to 350 meters, done a bunch of stuff up close and run quite a bit of auto. But the real question now is, how's running one of these bad boys? So I have a Surefire 3 prong on here. This is the RC2 Mini, uh, which is a favorite of mine on particularly longer barrels, such as 14.5, 16 inch guns, or even something like this at 13.7. Uh, if I'm running a shorter gun, like a 10 and a half, 11 and a half, I, I, get, the, I get the bigger can, the standard size. So all we're gonna do, I slapped this puppy on there. Oh geez, it wasn't even open. I'm a noob. Ratchet it on. All right, so we're good to go. And then right now we're in the unsuppressed setting. So normally you would rotate the whole thing to put it in the suppressed setting to change the gas to handle uh, what's gonna happen with the suppressor. But because this is a chopped barrel, I'm not sure exactly what's gonna happen. We're gonna run it on uh, the unsuppressed setting. Suppressor is on. I just wanna say real quick, uh, with the ACR's gas system, it only has the two settings. It has the normal and then the suppressed. The suppressed turns the gas system off because when you're using a traditional baffled can, the gas pressure from using that can is what cycles the weapon. And the fact that he's running it on the normal setting with the suppressor, you can do that, but um, I wouldn't, mainly just because, I mean, I don't necessarily baby my guns, especially my ACR, but because, you know, they're no longer made, I try to keep it running for as long as possible, and I do have spare parts, but, um, I'm kind of a stickler to following what it says in the manual regarding suppressors on any gun, and on the ACR in the manual it says, to make sure that you're using the proper setting. So the casings are ejecting all the way forward. I'm gonna rotate this into the suppressed setting now. 180 degrees, S facing up. Make sure that's good to go. Ooh, that feels good. It's a little slow, it's a little slow. Not bad. Now for the auto. Let's see what auto does.
Now that's kinda, that's kinda sick. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Okay. Okay, okay, that's, uh, it's, uh, that's pretty rad. See, now that he's been playing with it a little bit, he's a little bit more open to the damn thing. Not gonna lie, that's pretty cool. That's not. So that's a few bursts into the head, just to see what's going on. But as you can see, in this suppressed setting, I also put a grip on here so I can pull the gun a little tighter into my body, giving me that right angle. Uh, it's a little easier to keep the gun on target. On the suppressed setting with this Surefire Mini, this thing's kinda hot, <laughs> not gonna lie, it's kinda cool. See, once you play with something a certain amount of time and you actually give it a chance, you know, that's when you start getting your actual opinion of the damn thing. And now, with his smiling, he's like a, 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 a giddy child with a brand new toy. Double head shots are good to go. Nice. The five's not great. Two Charlies, three Alphas. Yeah, I mean, it's right here. Back there. Didn't take my time enough. The auto's great, though. <laughs> I need to take my time more on this one. Yep. Three off with two Charlies. Three of five were good. Those footsteps. So the ACR has been working out for us today. That's pretty cool. And we have a professional who specialized in the ACR work on the gun. He got it to work, even with as strange as it is being a chopped down barrel and not like a standard 14.5 or 16 inch gun. But is the ACR still a gun that we're gonna go buy more of to field in our armory and come out and shoot tens of thousands of rounds with? Probably not. I know they're trying to bring it back and hey, kudos to them for trying to bring it back. If they can improve on the design, uh, but the issue is going to be combating, you know, how people already see the ACR and trying to change people's minds. Because for years, people have known that, you know, this gun wasn't as cool as they said it was going to be. And uh, not as reliable as they said it was going to be. And so... I just want to say real quick that the reliability for the ACR was not an issue until the Freedom Group took over. Um, the ACR is a cool rifle. Um, it's reliable, at least the earlier ones were. Remington, like I said before, really s screwed up when it came to the quality control. Um, the ACR is better than a lot of people, including Lucas, is giving credit for. It's not for everybody. I understand that. And Bushmaster really did screw up in terms of like the marketing. 
because when Magpul originally designed the Masada, you know, it was going to be like a $1,300 gun or something like that, have all that modularity, have AK lowers and stuff like that. And then when they handed it off to Bushmaster, none of that stuff really happened. Um, the caliber conversions did and the, sh and the barrel lengths did, but like really, really, really late. I think those didn't come about until like uh, almost four years before Remington closed down shop. So Bushmaster did screw a lot of the things with the ACR up, but the gun itself, the concept and the platform is amazing. It was ahead of its time for the time back in 2008. It's a lot of re-education that's gonna have to happen for this gun to be able to launch again with some success or at least some trust uh, from people. Uh, as far as this being a, a cool gun in auto, kind of, sort of. Now, should this rifle be available in select fire with automatic fire capability right out of the box available to all of us? Absolutely. The fact that I can own this because I have paid some special money to the government to make it legal to own is utterly preposterous. Uh, it's, it's, it's insanely stupid. Um, every rifle should be able to be full auto with just the press of a button if you want it. But in most cases, you're not gonna want that. You're gonna want semi-auto. I was throwing all kinds of shots over here. Inaccuracy, not effective fire on semi-auto. It's a big difference. So as far as this being a cool automatic rifle, sure, kind of, sorta, yeah, I guess. Uh, but the reality is... I kind of feel like he's flip-flopping with his opinion. Started out very critical and negative, then as the video went on, he got a little bit more positive towards like, oh yeah, this is actually kind of cool, this is kind of badass. And now he's kind of like in the middle. Which I'm not saying is a bad thing, but I'm getting mixed signals from this guy. All carbines should have that capability if the user wants it. So who knows, maybe we'll see some change in that in the next 10 years or so, but you also won't find very many YouTubers saying that it should change. So, hope that was enjoyable, guys. Maybe this gun will appear in other videos of ours, potentially. And uh, we've got some other fun guns that we wanna do videos on this year. So if you're interested in seeing that, you should definitely subscribe. Oh man, I hate I hate doing normal YouTube closers because we're not a normal YouTube channel. But I hope that was enjoyable. But again, really doesn't matter what kind of gun you've got. If you suck, you suck. So um, I don't know a whole lot about Lucas, but it's kind of clear to me that he is an AR fanboy. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Um, you know, ARs are good. They're tried and true. They're proven. You know, they've been around since you know the '60s with the M16 and. You know, it's a proven platform, I understand that, but, I mean, the the first, like, five to ten minutes of the video, he's, like, super critical over something that he clearly hasn't shot very often. He clearly hasn't um, taken the time to actually train to actually get a more um, educated decision on whether or not the ACR is good. I've been using the ACR since I was 18. It was the first gun I ever bought. And if I'm being totally honest, it's actually the only rifle that I have that I am actually a really good shot with. That's embarrassing, but that's kind of by choice because I just love the ACR that much. It will always be my go-to, and it has never failed me. However, the one thing I will admit, um, it did recently fail me, but it wasn't the gun. It was the ammo. I was using Winchester 55 grain 223. Like, I don't know if he was using 223. Um, I don't remember if he said 223 or 556 Winchester. Um, but, um, I, yeah, I was using Winchester 223. And the rounds wouldn't cycle. And it wasn't just my ACR that I was having issues with this. My MCX was as well. And that gun is freaking amazing. I've, I never had had issues. And generally, I don't use Winchester. N not really on purpose. It's just, I don't know. I always used Federal Brand and American Eagle for the most part. And, um, yeah, I was at the range one day. And I uh, brought my ACR, brought my MCX. And, yeah, the rounds just wouldn't cycle. And um, in both guns. And then um, I bought... 90 rounds from a friend of mine that ran through my ACR perfectly fine. And so I did a little research concerning Winchester 223, and I have found that um, apparently problems are quite common with Winchester ammunition, so I am hence staying away from it for 
the foreseeable future unless they get better. But um, yeah, that that was weird. So all in all, he was overly critical in the beginning, seemed to warm up to it, and then was kind of somewhere in the middle, which is fine. You know, he, um, he can have his own opinion. I don't agree with a lot of the things that he said because I feel like a lot of it was... Um, you know, prejudged before he actually got any real range time with the damn thing. Um, but hey, that's that's just that that's my two cents. That's literally what it is. I feel like if he were to give the ACR more time of day, he would be able to see the benefits that it offers. But I don't think he's going to do that, and that's totally fine. He's his own person. Um, but all in all, I think he was being very, very unfair with his criticism towards the acr but that's just my opinion i hope you guys like this video um if you guys want me to do more uh reactions to reviews of weapons gear and stuff like that let me know i'll be more than happy to do it for you um a friend of mine also sent me uh Garantham made a video on the acr that i hadn't seen and i'm going to be reacting to that too i'm going to be recording it after this and then i'm gonna put it up on my patreon so if you want to check that out please check me out on patreon um I have three different tiers. You can choose whichever one, um, but they all at, uh, offer early access to everything that I put up on YouTube. Thank you so much, guys. This is Spectre6 signing off. I'll see you next time.